Hi, Dave Hill here. Welcome to the video. This is lesson number 18 with the single string guitar lessons, uh, part two series. We've already gone through the 40 lessons of part one, and I hope you've learned a lot from those. But we're expanding on that base of knowledge and we're building it uh, in this next course. So if you remember from the previous lessons of this course, we, uh, we like to do a little warm up a, a lot of the lessons before we get going. So let's go ahead and review one of the warm ups that we did uh, back in, I believe it was lesson 14. And it was a sequence uh, that we used in a major scale or from a major scale. And if you recall, it was based off the E form of a major scale. So that would say be right here in C. And it was what we call a group of fours or not a group of four, but a diatonic sequence of fourths. So in other words, it was every fourth note of the major scale. So if you put them together in a sequence of fourths, you get this kind of a sound. And we did that in lesson uh, 14 and that was a warm up. And I want you to go back and review these lessons from time to time because you might find that you've forgotten some of the things that we've covered if you didn't write it down or if you didn't download a lesson and you might not have remembered what to practice. So this is something that we're going to review and then I'm going to show you the sequence in another pattern. So here's the review, a diatonic fourth shape all the way up to the ninth of the scale. Here we go, three, four. Back down. Now you can pick up the seventh there on the end. Okay? So that's basically every fourth note as we ascend diatonically. As you remember when we went to the fourth degree of the scale, it has to be this kind of fourth or a, what's called a sharp four because it's a diatonic note and it has to stay in the scale. So that's why that shape appears because this note is the diatonic to C, the B natural. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Three, four. Okay, so you want to do that with the metronome and, and do that uh, through a series of, uh, for a series of a few minutes. We're just doing it once, but you'd want to repeat that over and over again and make sure that you're playing it clean. Okay, so let's go ahead and work that out now in a different position from this, the A form of the major scale that would be right here. Okay, now let's take a look at how it's gonna, the shape's gonna come, come together down here. So it'll feel very fi familiar for a number of the notes because essentially they're the same tuning all the way up, up to here, up to the fifth. When you get up to the fifth, it looks and feels exactly the same way as you did up to this fifth, okay? So you'll feel familiar with that. It's pretty much the same fingering. It's only starts to look different when you get across the G in the B string because the B string is down a half step, so the shape has to modify. So you get into this shape, okay, and then when you go back to the, the B and the E string, you get back to that familiar shape. So that's how it looks different, and it's a uh, same thing though, it's every fourth note, and it's a sequence of uh, fourths, okay? So let's do it slowly here. Three and four and. Now watch my fingers carefully here. Back down. Now here's where we can pick up some extra notes down before we go back to the root again. See what I did there? Because this goes down to the fifth of the scale. The lowest note is the fifth. So we have to include those as well. Okay, so let's do that again. Starting from the root here, three, four. Back down. up 
picking up the lowest notes and coming back to, let's go ahead and do it again. So there's, there's our second pattern of a sequence of fours, okay? So we, now we know it in two shapes, okay? So I want you to do that for a warm-up every day uh, just to keep that, uh, your fingers going and, and, and really learning these shapes that much better. Okay, let's go ahead and, and take a look at our next uh, order of business here. We're going to go back and um, actually we're going to expand on our basis of knowledge from lesson of 16 where we d introduced the major seventh arpeggios okay and you'll recall from that lesson that we talked about these two shapes right here based off the same two patterns of the major scale i was just playing fourths in we were playing from the c shape or from the uh, e shape rather right here and we learned this arpeggio of a major seventh shape that was in lesson 16 we covered that okay so that was a nice sound and a nice addition to our to our, our uh, arpeggio knowledge because now we can play more extended melodies with that arpeggio than we could have with our major triage sound, which are nice, but it, they're not quite as colorful sounding, okay? And we also learned another type of a major seven arpeggio down here, and we learned it from the A form, and it looks like this. Okay, and based off that form of a major seven chord. And we might have even grabbed the seventh a little higher. Just to grab that. Okay, so we've already covered those. And that's what we're gonna assume now that you've been working on. But we're gonna add to those two shapes by introducing these two forms today. Okay? So what we've got here is we've got the form based off the G form and the C form right here. Okay? And what I mean by that is the G form from the cage system, it gets moved into a movable shape, is this form right here. And we're gonna make the major seventh uh, happen from these roots here. Okay, so all you gotta remember now is we've got the root here on our fourth finger. We go up to the major third, we stretch out to get the fifth here, and we really stretch to get the seventh with our first finger. So we have one, three, five, seven, right? One, three, five, seven, and then back into the root here. Third, fifth, seventh again, root on top. Okay, so that becomes a little bit more stretched out. But it's okay because you can use your first finger and slide into the root here. And then you can get the major seven in the bottom again. So you've actually got three major sevenths as well. So you can also started on the major seventh, which is nice. Okay, another option for the fingering here is to put the seventh with your fourth finger. Okay, so that might be an option that you want to explore too. One, three, five, seven. One, three, five, seven. One, three, five, seven. I'm sorry. Eight, seven, five, three, one, seven, five, three, one. So it's it's good either way. You might go up with the seventh here and come down and grabbing it this way. But any in any case, it's right or it's based off this form of a major triad or a major seventh chord right here. Okay, so that's an important uh, bridge between this shape and this shape. Which we, we already know right now, but now we have the one in between. Okay, great. So that's a new one for us. We remember that one. And now we're also going to learn the, uh, the arpeggio, the major seventh arpeggio built off the C form. As we know, um, that form becomes movable when we bring it, we use our root right here, or bar right here, and we get a major seventh chord from simply just picking up our second root here on top. We've got a major seventh chord and that's the great thing about this chord is it looks very much like the arpeggio that we're actually going to learn so you'll, you'll probably find this one very easy to learn because it looks so much like the form of the chord 
what you're doing is opening up a couple notes here to get all of them available, right? So you have the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, the root, the third, and the fifth on the top. Back down, the seventh right here, and then the fifth on the bottom and the third. So the lowest note in this position is the third. Okay, so that's, that's an F major seventh arpeggio, or if we wanted to do it in C, we would do it up here and connect the other shapes, and then finally, it would be up here for C. Now you're probably wondering what's going to happen right there between this one and right here. Well, we're going to learn that one. We're going to save that one for last. Okay, so we're introducing two new shapes here today. Okay, and uh, this is going to take some time to work on. You're going to want to practice these, you know, in a drill and, and over some kind of progression and some kind of practice routine. But let's just do them right now, back where we started. So we'll do C major right here. Right, built off the G form. And then we're going to go to F major 7. together. Okay, I like the way they feel playing from the root, the uh, seventh too. So let's do both of these starting from the seventh of the chord. Like that. Okay, here we go. Two, three, C major seven. There we go. Very nice. Okay, here's the F major seven starting from the seventh, the E. Three, four, at the lowest notes and play the chord. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Let's do those back to back again without stopping now. Three, four, C. F, go. Back to C. Those, those two shapes now are going to really fill out our range of the arpeggios that we can play together now. Okay, so we've almost got the five shapes of the major seventh. We've got four of them right now, but one more, and we're going to have five shapes connected with our major scales and also connected with our triads as well. So that's an important thing to be aware of. Now, um, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can apply these and have a little fun with them. Um, if you take a look at the progression here, I'm going to show you a concept here that we're going to build off of in our progression, and I think I've discussed in previous lessons, and we'll learn more about it later. But as you can see on the board behind me, I've written uh, the, the arrangement of notes in an F major 7 arpeggio right here, root, third, fifth, seventh. These notes right here. Okay, now. You can see on my progression right here, I'm telling you to keep playing an F major 7, obviously on the F, but even over the D minor chord. Now, you might be wondering why, why, am, I, why am I being told to play an F major 7 arpeggio over the D minor? Well, we've discussed this before, but I'll show you again. If you look at an F major 7 arpeggio and you look at the way the notes compare to a D minor chord, you're going to notice something. A D minor chord is built off the root of D, the third is an F, the fifth is an A, and the seventh is a C. Now these three notes right here are one, three, five of an F chord, right? The three, five, and seven of D minor are the root third fifth of, D, of F major. So obviously F and D minor share a number of notes together, okay? And if you continue to up playing the seventh of of F major 7, you have an E, and that E is the ninth of D minor. So even if you don't play the D and you just kept playing F major 7, you've got essentially 3, 5, 7, and 9 of D minor when you play F major 7 over a D minor root. Okay, so that's why it sounds good. It actually just makes it sound like an F, like a D minor ninth 
sound when you play that. So that's what we're going to do. So you don't have to actually even worry about not knowing a D minor 7 arpeggio yet. You're just going to play F major 7. It's called a diatonic substitution principle. And that's what we're doing here. And so even though I've given you some other chords to play over, we're just going to use the one uh, arpeggio that we know right now and just use it over the minor chords and, and be smart about it. So the same concept here is going to apply when we go to A minor 7. I'm going to start off by having you play a C major 7 arpeggio, which is the substitution that you could play for A minor. Okay? So the rule to remember is pretty easy. You just you think the minor chord and you go up a, major, a minor 3rd and you play a major 7 arpeggio. That's the relationship. Up a minor 3rd um, on, the, on the minor chord and you play an F, uh, a major 7 arpeggio and that's your substitution. So up a minor 3rd from A is C and that's great because we already know this one right here. So it's going to work out pretty good. So check it out. Let's play it over. Let's listen to the progression first. See what it sounds like and then we're going to get let turn you loose in the chords here. Okay, here we go. This is what it sounds like. Three, four. Kind of a really R&B kind of thing. Arpeggios against it. Here's F major seven from the. Okay, now C major seven from the major seven. Back to F. Now don't change chord changes underneath you, but you keep playing F. Now there's C major 7. See how that sounds pretty cool? Back to F here. I'm going to start at the top of this arpeggio. There's C major 7 on the top. Triplets. That's kind of cool. C major seven. Okay. So we're just being very mechanical about using these arpeggios right now because I'm trying to get you kind of used to the sound of and the fingering of these shapes while you're playing over this progression. But it really starts to come together when you, when you can use the arpeggios and you can also play the scales uh, that are diatonic to these chords. And essentially, all these chords belong to the key of C. So if I'm in this position playing these arpeggios, I can, of course, add the notes, the full notes of the C major scale in addition to the arpeggios. And that's really what starts to make it sound a little bit more musical and more natural. So let's do that a little bit. I'll play a little bit more around the scale notes and also use the arpeggios at just the right times and you'll kind of see how it comes together. Okay, and it's a lot more fun that way too, but you're doing a good job if you're working on the arpeggios and you've just learned these shapes. That's, that's cool and that's good for now. So here's, here's adding a little bit more of the major scale along the way. Three, four,
back to my position. Okay, so there you have it, pretty much in one position with the two new shapes that we've learned today. And just using the major scale of C, I was able to play, you know, some pretty musical stuff um, and, and, and play right off the chords now, really individually and really bringing the melody of the chords a lot more effectively because of these two shapes that we've learned. Imagine now if we start playing over the full range of the neck and we start incorporating more of the arpeggios that we know and uh, more of the scale patterns we can really open up our playing a lot more. So that's what we learned today. We've learned four shapes now in total with our major seventh arpeggios. I want you to practice the, these shapes over this chord progression or make up something along the lines of this kind of a thing where you're moving from one pattern to another. They don't have to even stay in the same key, but try to get your hands used to playing through these different kinds of uh, major seventh chords and that's really gonna benefit your playing. All right, I hope you had a good lesson. Review those four some more for the sequence, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Dave Hill signing off. Practice hard, and I'll see you later. Bye.